Working memory, as the name implies, contains information that we're actively working on and in a nutshell is the seat of our conscious awareness. A key aspect of working memory is an information that is registered in our sensory memory that we attend to will be processed in our working memory and likewise information that is contained in our LTM is regularly extracted, put into our working memory, manipulated, enabling us to do certain tasks such as perform mental arithmetic, navigation, um, speech, problem solving, etc. So according to Badley and Hitch, one of the shortcomings of the Atkinson, Schiffer and Multistore memory model was that based on their model, short-term memory was a unitary storage system. That is, it didn't account for the different types of processing of sensory information. So Badley and Hitch devised this multi-store system for the middle stage of memory comprising of the slave systems, the phonological loop, verbal memory, the visuospatial sketchpad, largely involved in navigation, the episodic buffer, we'll talk about that role a bit later, and the boss of these slave systems, of course, the central executive. Let's look at the phonological loop or verbal working memory, which deals with both spoken and written material and which enables us to transform visually presented text into a phonological code. Now there's two parts to the phonological loop. There's the phonological store which is responsible for speech perception by acting as a inner ear and holding information in the form of speech for one to two seconds. Secondly, the articulatory control is linked to speech production by acting as an inner voice, by rehearsing information and storing verbal information from the phonological store. And it does this by looping this information, enabling us to retain it in our working memory. So secondly, the visuospatial sketchpad or visual working memory, which uses an inner eye to represent visual information is largely used for navigation, which helps us keep tabs on the location of objects in relation to us as we move around in our environment. So therefore stops us from bumping into things. It enables us to manipulate visual and spatial information from our long-term memory. So if you close your eyes, can you imagine the layout of the posters on your wall, for instance, maybe the layout of your classroom, etc. So again, it enables us to think visually by communicating with our long-term memory. It's also involved in tasks which involve the planning uh, of a series of spatial movements, so for instance navigating your way through a building, etc. So the episodic buffer which provides a mental workbench for the cognitive representation of objects as directed by the central executive. It provides the conduit between the central executive and the two slave systems, the phonological loop and of course the visuospatial sketchpad. It retrieves information from long-term from long-term memory such as a mathematical formula when we need to perform some mental arithmetic and it links information to form integrated and meaningful units of the visual aspects, spatial aspects, verbal aspects of from long-term memory to create an integrated and sequential episode of events. So as the name implies, the central executive drives the whole system, allocates tasks to the phonological loop and the visuospatial sketchpad, as well as working on and manipulating information from these two slave systems. It enables us to problem solve and perform mental arithmetic. It controls our attention and enables us to make quick decisions, etc. So for instance, you're driving along the highway, your mobile phone's ringing. It enables you to make the decision to either answer the phone on the spot with the risk of getting a fine or having a crash or maybe pull over in a kilometre's time, etc. It regularly retrieves information from our long-term memory and again puts it in our consciousness and enables us to make decisions based on existing knowledge, etc. It coordinates the flow of information between the middle level of memory and our long-term memory 
and importantly, filters or suppresses irrelevant information that it's bombarding our senses from our attention so that we can focus on a conversation or maybe some vision on the board, etc. So again, just central executive that really is the seat of our consciousness. Let's look at some of the strengths of the working memory model. The multi-store approach is much more popular these days with researchers than the Atkinson Schifrin single store approach because it does acknowledge the different store stores for different types of information, whether it be verbal, visual, spatial, as well as the ability to extract information from LTM, put it in the middle stage of memory, manipulate it, perform mental arithmetic, make decisions, plan, etc. The KF case study, well KF suffered a head trauma as a result of a motorcycle accident and it did damage the parts of the brain responsible for short-term memory and there, were, there was a diminished performance in his verbal memory but his visual and spatial memory was largely unaffected. Thirdly, the working memory model provided a more comprehensive list of functions such as reading, the ability to navigate, perform mental arith arithmetic, etc. And unlike the Atkinson Schifrin model, it didn't overestimate the importance of rehearsal in consolidating information from STM to LTM. So some of the weaknesses of the working memory model, firstly the idea that the visual and spatial systems are connected. A good exception to this is blind people who have excellent spatial awareness despite the lack of visual cues in their environment. Uh, the capacity for the central executive is untested and hence unknown. It's not a comprehensive memory model because it doesn't cater for sensory or long-term memory. And it doesn't account for changes in our processing ability over time or due to practice.